The war that broke out in the summer of 1914 was expected to end quickly, according to the military authorities. Instead, it would last more than four years. The introduction of new weapons and in particular the massive use of artillery at an unprecedented level led to heavy losses for all the main protagonists. By the time peace was finally established, Europe had lost its role as world leader, and it was United States President Woodrow Wilson who put forward the principles for a new international order. We have a 20 parts video series for you where we cover every aspect of the First World War, battles, alliances, and many more. So make sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications for future videos. Also, let us know in the comments below what do you think. And now, back to the video. On the morning of June 28, 1914, the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and his wife Sophie, Duchess of Hohenberg, embarked on a fateful journey through the streets of Sarajevo. Their procession was intended to display the mighty and presence of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, but it was not to be. As their car approached City Hall, a bomb was thrown in their direction by Nadelko Kabrinovic, a member of the Black Hand, a nationalist group seeking to end Austro-Hungarian rule over Bosnia. Fortunately, the bomb missed its mark, and the Archduke and his wife escaped unharmed, allowing the procession to continue. However, this sense of relief was short-lived. Approximately half an hour later, as the Archduke's car returned along a revised route, it passed in front of Schiller's store, where another member of the Black Hand, Gavrilo Princip, lay in wait. Princip seized the opportunity and fired two shots, fatally wounding both the Archduke and his wife. This assassination carried out by a group of young Bosnian Serbs who were vehemently opposed to the Austro-Hungarian presence in their homeland set off a chain of events that would soon plunge Europe into a devastating conflict. In the weeks following the assassination, the Austro-Hungarian government saw an opportunity to assert its dominance over the region. They issued an ultimatum to Serbia, making demands that were intentionally unacceptable to provoke a confrontation. Serbia's ambition to unite all southern Slavic peoples into a greater Yugoslavia posed a direct threat to the integrity of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The ultimatum in Serbia's response escalated tensions rapidly. On July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, and Belgrade was bombed. The conflict quickly drew in other nations due to a web of alliances and mutual defense agreements that had been established across Europe. By July 30th, Russia, bound by treaty to protect Serbia, declared a general mobilization. This action prompted Germany, Austria-Hungary's ally, to declare war on Russia on August 1st. France, allied with Russia, also began mobilizing its forces. The situation deteriorated further when Germany declared war on France on August 3rd and invaded Belgium the following day. This invasion violated Belgian neutrality, compelling the United Kingdom to enter the war in defense of Belgium and in support of its allies, France and Russia. Within a matter of days, Europe was engulfed in war. The carefully constructed system of alliances intended to maintain a balance of power and prevent large-scale conflicts, instead acted as a catalyst for widespread hostilities. Public opinion across the continent failed to mobilize effectively to preserve the peace, and the war that many believed would be short-lived instead persisted for over four years, drawing in numerous other nations. The war expanded as new countries joined the fray. The Ottoman Empire entered the war on the side of the Central Powers in November 1914, followed by Italy switching sides to join the Allies in May 1915. Bulgaria allied with the Central Powers in October 1915. The conflict spread beyond Europe, involving European colonial empires and gaining a global dimension. Portugal and Romania joined the Allies in March and September 1916, respectively, and Greece in June 1917. A significant turning point came in April 1917 when the United States, after enduring unrestricted submarine warfare and other provocations, declared war on Germany. This entry by the United States not only bolstered the Allied forces but also marked the war's transition into a truly global conflict, impacting countries and colonies around the world. The war, which had begun with the assassination in Sarajevo, evolved into one of the deadliest conflicts in human history, fundamentally altering the political landscape of Europe and the world. The early 20th century saw the formation of strategic military alliances, which set the stage for a complex and precarious balance of power in Europe. The creation of the Triple Entente, consisting of France, Russia, and the United Kingdom, presented a significant strategic dilemma for Germany. In the event of a conflict, 
Germany would face the daunting prospect of fighting a two-front war against France in the West and Russia in the East. To address this challenge, the German general staff, led by General Alfred von Schlieffen, developed a meticulous plan as early as 1905. Known as the Schlieffen Plan, it was designed to quickly defeat France before Russia could fully mobilize its massive army. Schlieffen estimated that it would take Russia approximately six weeks to organize its forces, providing Germany with a critical window to concentrate its efforts on the Western Front. Despite the formidable size and strength of the German military, Schlieffen recognized that a direct assault on the heavily fortified French border in Lorraine would be costly and time-consuming. Instead, he proposed a bold and audacious maneuver, bypassing the French fortifications by invading neutral Belgium. The plan called for a rapid and powerful right-wing sweep through Belgium and northern France, encircling Paris from the west and trapping the French armies. The Schlieffen plan was predicated on speed and decisiveness. It envisioned a massive deployment of German troops to the right wing, which would execute a wide-flanking movement through Belgium, enveloping and crushing the French forces. Once France was defeated, Germany would then shift its focus eastward to confront Russia. However, when war finally broke out in 1914, the execution of the Schlieffen plan was compromised. The strength of the German right wing, which Schlieffen had deemed essential for success, was reduced to reinforce German forces in Alsace and on the Russian front. This weakening of the right wing diluted the plan's effectiveness and set the stage for a protracted and grueling conflict. From the perspective of the French general staff, Belgium was also seen as a likely theater of operations. However, France's British ally was strongly opposed to violating Belgian neutrality, a stance that complicated strategic planning. Instead, the French military developed Plan 16, a strategy that focused on launching an offensive in the central section of the front, specifically to the east of the Mosul River and between Verdun and Metz. Plan 16 was predicated on a doctrine of offensive action, reflecting the French belief in the élan vital, or the fighting spirit of their troops. The plan aimed to penetrate deep into German territory, thereby forcing a decisive engagement. To prepare for this offensive, the French government extended the length of mandatory military service to three years, ensuring that a larger and more experienced force would be available when hostilities commenced. Despite these preparations, the outbreak of war caught both sides off guard. The additional manpower envisioned by the extension of military service had not yet fully materialized, and the initial engagements did not proceed as planned. The violation of Belgian neutrality by German forces not only brought the United Kingdom into the war, but also galvanized Allied resistance. The early months of the war saw the implementation of these grand strategies. But reality quickly diverged from the plans laid out by military theorists. The German advance through Belgium and northern France was initially successful, but eventually stalled due to logistical challenges, stiffening resistance, and the sheer scale of the conflict. The Battle of the Marne in September 1914 marked a significant turning point as the Allies managed to halt the German advance and prevent the encirclement of Paris. On the Eastern Front, Russia mobilized more rapidly than anticipated, launching offensives into East Prussia and Galicia. The initial Russian advances created additional pressure on Germany, necessitating the diversion of forces from the Western Front. The failure of both the Schlieffen Plan and Plan 16 underscored the complexity and unpredictability of modern warfare. The anticipated quick victories gave way to a prolonged and bloody stalemate with both sides digging in for trench warfare that would define the Western Front for the next four years. The strategic plans of 1914, conceived in a different era, proved ill-suited to the realities of industrialized conflict, leading to a war of attrition that would reshape Europe and the world. The period from 1871 to 1914 was marked by profound transformations and escalating tensions in Europe. The map of Europe, which had been meticulously crafted by negotiators at the Congress of Vienna in 1815, underwent significant changes. Six great powers now dominated the continent, each striving to assert its influence and intervene in international affairs. These powers were the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the German Empire, Italy, Russia, France, and England. In the heart of Europe, three powers that had been fragmented in 1815 emerged as unified entities by the late 19th century. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, a dual monarchy established in 1867, faced the complex task of managing diverse ethnic and national groups within its borders. This multi-ethnic empire sought to expand its influence in the Balkans, where nationalist movements were gaining momentum. 
The German Empire, unified in 1871 under the leadership of Prussia, aimed to consolidate its newly achieved cohesion. This process involved integrating various German states into a single national framework. Similarly, Italy, unified in the same year, focused on solidifying its national unity and addressing regional disparities. To the east, the vast Russian Empire extended from Poland to the Pacific Ocean, encompassing a multitude of ethnic groups across Europe and Asia. The Tsars were dedicated to maintaining the unity of this sprawling empire. They pursued a pan-Slavic policy, particularly in the Balkans, aiming to support Slavic nations and counter Austro-Hungarian and Ottoman influence in the region. In Western Europe, France and England, both long-standing and relatively democratic nations, engaged in competitive colonial policies. Their imperial ambitions often brought them into conflict, not only with each other, but also with other colonial powers, as they sought to expand and protect their overseas empires. Despite the dominance of these great powers, numerous ethnic and national groups remained dissatisfied. Their demands for recognition based on language, religion, and culture increased, especially within multinational empires like Austro-Hungary and Russia, and even within nation-states like France and Italy. To manage these internal pressures, states often sought to reinforce cohesion through various means, sometimes making concessions. Russia adopted a policy of divide and rule in regions like Finland and the Baltic states, aiming to prevent unified opposition. Hungary pursued Magyarization, promoting the Hungarian language and culture to the displeasure of Croats and Romanians within its territory. Austria attempted to mediate between German and Czech populations in Bohemia. England faced the Irish question considering an autonomy project to address Irish demands for self-governance. Some of these demands were met with partial or full concessions. Iceland gradually gained political autonomy from Denmark, Norway's independence was recognized by Sweden, and new states in the Balkans emerged from the disintegrating Ottoman Empire. Diplomatically, the relations among the great powers underwent a significant transformation. The ideal of a harmonious European order envisioned at the Congress of Vienna gave way to a system of alliances. By the turn of the century, Europe was divided into two hostile blocs, the Triple Alliance, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy, and the Triple Entente, France, Russia, and England. This system of alliances was underpinned by intense national sentiment. Each nation within these blocs claimed a civilizing mission, and state patriotism was promoted through public education and military service, often leading to aggressive nationalism. This nationalism was further fueled by crises and conflicts that arose within and between the Allied blocs. Between 1905 and 1914, Europe experienced a series of crises that heightened tensions. These included confrontations between Russia and Austria-Hungary in the Balkans and disputes between France and Germany over colonial territories. The Moroccan Crises, 1905 and 1911, and the Balkan Wars, 1912 to 1913, exemplified the growing instability and competition among the great powers. Despite these crises, efforts at dialogue and cooperation continued. However, the mechanisms of alliance systems and the accelerating arms race created an environment where even minor conflicts had the potential to escalate. The intricate web of alliances and the buildup of military capabilities made it increasingly difficult to resolve disputes peacefully. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914 was the spark that ignited this volatile situation. The pre-existing tensions and rivalries, exacerbated by nationalist fervor and militaristic policies, quickly spiraled out of control. The mobilization of alliances and the rapid succession of war declarations plunged Europe into a conflict that would become the First World War. The period from 1871 to 1914, therefore, represents a crucial phase in European history. It was a time of nation-building and empire expansion, but also of rising nationalism and deepening divisions. The intricate and often contradictory forces at play during these years set the stage for the devastating clash of nations that would reshape the continent and the world. The weakening of the Ottoman Empire throughout the 19th century set the stage for a tumultuous period of national uprisings and territorial disputes in the Balkans. European powers, each with their own strategic interests, often intervened in the region, either supporting or suppressing the aspirations of various Balkan peoples for independence. By 1875, the Ottoman Empire's control over the Balkans was already shaky. While Serbia and Romania had gained autonomy, the Sultan still held sway over most of the region. The first significant crisis erupted when heavy Ottoman taxes led to widespread revolts. The brutal repression of these uprisings by Turkish forces shocked European public opinion. 
yet the divided state of Europe rendered it incapable of imposing significant concessions on the Sultan. Seizing upon this European disunity, Tsar Alexander II of Russia declared war on the Ottoman Empire in 1877. Russian troops quickly advanced to the outskirts of Constantinople. The ensuing Treaty of San Stefano, signed in March 1878, imposed harsh terms on the Sultan, including the creation of a large autonomous Bulgarian state, which would encompass much of the central Balkans and be heavily influenced by Russia. However, this arrangement alarmed other powers, particularly Austria-Hungary and Britain. Austria-Hungary saw the new Greater Bulgaria as an obstacle to its own territorial ambitions, while Britain perceived it as a threat to the strategic balance at the Straits. To prevent a broader conflict, German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck convened the Congress of Berlin in June 1878. The Congress of Berlin significantly altered the agreements made at San Stefano. Key outcomes included the recognition of the independence of Serbia, Romania, and Montenegro. Austria-Hungary was given administrative control over Bosnia-Herzegovina and the Sanjak of Novi Pazar. Meanwhile, Greater Bulgaria was downsized, losing territories in Thrace and being split into two entities, an autonomous Bulgaria and the Principality of Eastern Rumelia. Greece was promised Thessaly. Despite these changes, the new geopolitical map of the Balkans was far from stable. The partial disintegration of Ottoman control sparked a wave of nationalism among the Balkan peoples. The Russian Empire, having been forced to accept a diminished Bulgaria, deepened its rivalry with Austria-Hungary. Tensions continued to simmer, and in 1908, Austria-Hungary formally annexed Bosnia-Herzegovina. This came to be because of a opportunities presented at that time. As the Ottoman Empire weakened in the late 19th century, the Austro-Hungarian Empire was granted special rights to occupy and administer the provinces of Bosnia and Herzegovina. This region had a significant Serbian population, and the newly independent Kingdom of Serbia harbored aspirations to eventually incorporate these territories. The Serbs, being Slavic and Greek Orthodox, looked to the Tsar of Russia as their protector and champion. The situation escalated as Austro-Hungarian and Serbian ambitions clashed. After a period of confused diplomacy with Russia, Austria-Hungary preempted Serbian aspirations by formally annexing Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1908. This move was a strategic effort to solidify Austro-Hungarian influence in the Balkans and counteract Serbian nationalist movements. To secure this annexation, Austria-Hungary made several concessions. They agreed to evacuate the Sanjak of Novi Pazar, a region that had served as a buffer between Serbia and Montenegro. Additionally, Austria-Hungary tacitly promised to support Russian aspirations for free passage through the Dardanelles, a crucial maritime route. However, this support was rendered moot as other European powers intervened to maintain Ottoman control of the Straits, fearing that Russian access would upset the balance of power in the region. The annexation sparked a significant international crisis, characterized by blustering threats of war and intense multilateral diplomacy. Despite their initial outrage, both Serbia and Russia eventually accepted the annexation as a fait accompli. The crisis, however, deepened the estrangement between Russia and Serbia on one side and Austria-Hungary on the other. This growing hostility planted the seeds for future conflicts, as both Russia and Serbia aspired to eventually overturn Austro-Hungarian gains and assert their own influence in the Balkans. Amid this crisis, Crete united with Greece, and Bulgaria declared full independence. In response to the shifting power dynamics, Russian diplomacy focused on fostering an alliance among the Balkan states. By early 1912, recognizing the vulnerability of the declining Ottoman Empire, the Christian states of Bulgaria, Greece, Montenegro, and Serbia negotiated the formation of the Balkan League. This alliance aimed to expel the Ottoman Turks from the Balkans and divide the conquered territories among themselves. The geopolitical landscape of the region was further complicated by the uprising of the Albanians, who sought independence from the Ottoman Empire and laid claim to territories that members of the Balkan League also desired. The First Balkan War began in October 1912, when the Balkan League launched a coordinated attack against the Ottoman Empire. The League's forces, composed of well-prepared and motivated armies, achieved a series of decisive victories. The Serbian army won crucial battles at Kumanovo and Bitola, while Bulgarian forces triumphed at the Battle of Kirk Kilis and the Battle of Lule Burgas. Greek troops, meanwhile, secured victories in southern Macedonia and Epirus, and the Montenegrins captured key positions in northern Albania. The rapid and overwhelming success of the Balkan League's offensives drove the Ottoman forces back to the outskirts of Constantinople, or modern-day Istanbul. 
By the end of 1912, the Ottoman Empire had lost almost all its European territories, retaining only a small foothold in Thrace. The League's victory was solidified by the Treaty of London in May 1913, which officially ended the First Balkan War and recognized the territorial gains of the Balkan states. However, the triumphant allies soon fell into discord over the division of the newly acquired territories. Bulgaria, which had borne the brunt of the fighting, demanded a larger share of Macedonia, a region also claimed by Serbia and Greece. Tensions escalated as each nation sought to maximize its territorial gains, leading to a breakdown in negotiations. The resulting disagreements led to the outbreak of the Second Balkan War in June 1913. Bulgaria, feeling betrayed by its former allies, launched a surprise attack on Serbian and Greek positions in Macedonia. This aggressive move backfired as Serbia and Greece quickly formed a new alliance and counterattacked. Romania and the Ottoman Empire, seeing an opportunity to regain lost territories, also joined the war against Bulgaria. The combined forces of Serbia, Greece, Romania and the Ottoman Empire decisively defeated Bulgaria. The Treaty of Bucharest, signed on August 10, 1913, redrew the map of the Balkans once more. Serbia emerged as the primary beneficiary, gaining much of Macedonia and establishing a common border with Montenegro. However, Austria-Hungary ensured Albania's independence, denying Serbia access to the Adriatic Sea. Greece expanded its territory to include Epirus, southern Macedonia, and most of the Aegean Islands. Bulgaria received some territory along the Aegean but had to cede southern Dobruja to Romania, falling short of its territorial aspirations. The Ottoman Empire managed to reclaim a small part of eastern Thrace, including the city of Adirne. The latest reshuffling of Balkan territories further intensified the rivalries between the great powers, especially between Russia and Austria-Hungary. Russia, as the protector of Slavic nations, particularly Serbia, found itself in direct opposition to Austria-Hungary, which had strategic interests in supporting Bulgaria and maintaining its influence in the region. These rivalries contributed significantly to the precarious balance of power in Europe. The heightened tensions and unresolved conflicts among the Balkan states, along with the great powers' competing interests, created a powder keg waiting to explode. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria and Sarajevo in June 1914 would soon ignite this volatile mix, leading directly to the outbreak of the First World War. The Balkan Wars had set the stage for a much larger and more devastating conflict, demonstrating the fragility of peace and the far-reaching consequences of nationalist ambitions and great power rivalries.